hello everyone <laughs> welcome back to my channel to my sisters with love i'm inga and i'm so glad that you came by today i'm so happy to see you here for my regular subscribers i'm so thankful for your patronage and um i know you'll be blessed by what you hear and what you see i'm just giving god praise and thanks for life um everything is not perfect but you know as they say we always have to give god thanks because there's always something to be thankful for well i there are things that i can be thankful for which i am and today i just want to share and encourage you briefly um don't want to stay long and uh, I hope that you're blessed. Okay, so Father, we just want to thank you for your word. We give you this moment. We ask, Lord, that you would take complete control. Let your words be like water to the thirsty. And Father, satisfy everyone, every heart, every desire, because it's your word. In Jesus name amen so I was contemplating um, Peter um, in his moment of denial of Jesus and we know that uh, Peter was with Jesus for about three and a half years during his ministerial life and he learned everything he saw everything and uh, he thought that he was good with Jesus, you know. It's my boy, I got your back, got your back. I'm going to die with you. And uh, we know, as the Bible account in the Gospels say that, when the time actually came, he denied even knowing Jesus, even knowing Jesus, he just like, what? I, I don't know him. I don't know who you're talking about. You know, uh, but there are many things that Peter witnessed, even raising raising people from the dead, raising Lazarus from the dead. The, the the amazing things that they would have witnessed with Jesus. They would think that it was enough to hold him, enough to keep him faithful, enough for him to not betray Jesus. I mean, you've never seen in your entire life many of the miracles that Jesus did, many other things, they never seen it, never seen it. And it's amazing that sometimes the things that God will do for us, we've never seen it done. We've never experienced it so. And yet we can, in moments, deny him. When we're out there in the world, when we want to be loved, when we want to be appreciated, we want to feel a part of something. We want to feel seen. Because that's the self in us. We're in denial. We're in denial of who we are. Who we truly are. When Jesus said to Peter, you're going to deny me. It wasn't really about the denial, the words. Jesus was saying, uh, you're not truly committed to me yet, Peter. I'm telling your heart. And... Sometimes we know ourselves, but God knows us more than we know ourselves. Sometimes some, someone may come with a word to us and tell us, hey, God says this, and you struggle to believe it, but God knows you more than you know yourself. So you might think, wow, that prophecy seems too great to be fulfilled in my life. I'm too small. I'm not, I'm not um, an eloquent person speaker i have nothing no resources no um 
educational background, no status. But God knows you more than you know yourself. God knew Peter more than he knew himself. And he said, Peter, you're going to deny me. Because the truth is that you're not fully on my side yet. Self is still alive. And that self got to die. I was contemplating one day as I was driving. I said, Lord, I want to I wanna be talking to you like, you know, like I talk to my friends, like they're right there next to me. And I know. And he said, but Inga, I am. I am, simple as it is, and we say it all the time, we should really act. As Christians, we should we should be like, whatever we do, remember that God is not far. He's right there next to us. He's right there. Where, where can he not be? As creator of the universe, where can he not be? He said, if you make your bed in hell, I'm there. Yes. So he knows us, and he was saying to Peter, look, I know you. I know your heart is not true with me yet, but I've prayed for you. Because I know one day, you're going to be converted, Peter. Yourself is going to die to self. That's what it is. You're not truly committed to me yet. You're still thinking about you, your feelings, your heart. Peter didn't want to die. We're still thinking about ourselves. Our flesh doesn't want to die to what God wants to do in us. That's that's what it is. Our flesh has to die and give ourselves over to what God wants to do in us. So I had to come to terms with that. And I'm asking God every day. And he's doing it because he's giving me the desire for myself to die. And I'm finding peace in just allowing God to use me any way he wants. How he chooses, not how I choose. It's a process. It's still a process, yes. But there are moments when I certainly feel and realize that God is doing it. You don't know when the change comes. You just, like the wind, he says, the wind blows. The Holy Spirit is like that. The Holy Spirit is, is the change agent. He's the one that comes in and does the change in us. So when we, when our heart is being transformed from that selfish, self-absorbed state, self-sufficient state, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. He said it comes in like the wind. You don't know where the wind comes from, and you don't know where it's going to. And that's how the Holy Spirit works in our heart. You just find that you're not a particular way anymore. And I thank God that that is what he wants to do for us today. This word is just to say to you, don't worry if you are not where you think you should be yet. But you're growing. Every day you're growing. And God knows you more than you know yourself. If you put a word inside of you, nurture that word. And allow yourself to die every day. When God says something to you, be quick to do it. As I'm saying this to you, I'm saying it to myself. Today, a young woman came to my mind and he said, pray. I didn't immediately do it, but like a minute or so later, I did go and I prayed. And I felt so much peace. Um, I confess it is not easy, but when it is done, you have so much peace. This is how the dying to self operates. When you stop telling God um, later, tomorrow, um, you know, whatever it is. The simplicity is what God speaks to you in that moment. Do that. Your self starts to die. Every time you surrender to Jesus, the self starts to die a little more and more and more. And over time, you find that is completely dead. Uh, people will say things to us, people will say things about us, and it will hurt, but it will not hurt to the degree where we will want to defend ourselves. We will say, okay, that's fine. And keep on, it will not affect the joy that we have for working for Jesus. If it does, self is not dead yet. 
It will not affect our work for God. It will not affect our ministry if we do have one. It will not affect what we are doing for Christ. And we will do it regardless of what people say or think of us. Not, not that we do not care for people. But when they say things about us, it may hurt for a second because we are humans. Christ was hurt when the disciples didn't pray with him in the garden. But it didn't stop him from completing the mission that God had set him to do. Because we are human beings, we have feelings. God put them in us. It what is what connects us to each other and to God. Feelings are there. They play a part, but they are to be controlled and managed through the Holy Spirit. So... It's not that you wouldn't feel it. It's not that you might not be hurt, not offended in the sense that we are hiding, like Peter. You don't want to be seen. No. Offense is when we take offense to something, is when we stop doing what God has asked us to do because our feelings are hurt. No, we are hurt simply because we love this person, we care about them, and we truly hoped that they would receive what God is giving to them through us. But if they do not, and if they say hurtful things about us, and we're hurt by that, but we do not respond, or it doesn't affect our, our service to Christ that is truly dying to ourselves. It doesn't mean that you become uh, stone-hearted, that you don't feel anything. No, but it means that it's not affecting or paralyzing you in any way to stop you from being an obedient servant of Christ. As a matter of fact, you go harder for others who are open. So I pray that you are encouraged by this word. Um, I'm just having a peaceful time in the presence of God today. And I pray that you're best. Keep the faith. So I'm going to sing this little hymn that I know. And it has blessed me and I hope that it blesses you today. All right. My faith looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me. While I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. May thy Rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire as thou hast died for me. Oh, may my love to thee. Pure woman, changeless be a living fire. I hope it's truly really best. I hope they don't cut that. But um, it's a beautiful hymn. I just love the words of the first words. My faith looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Because I... I can't have any faith in anything or anyone else. Need less to say myself. So I say, and I'm reminded that I can only truly have faith in the one who can help me ultimately, and that is Jesus. So I say, my faith looks up. My faith looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be 
that you've been truly blessed look to Jesus because he will help you he helped Peter eventually we know the story of Peter. he eventually came around and he was instrumental he loved his Lord and he served him to the death until his dying day he was truly converted so there is hope for all of us no matter what our situation is no matter where we are in our journey but lay your faith, look up to Jesus. He alone can help you. And he's going to complete that work in you that he started. So have a blessed day. Thank you again for stopping by. And I hope to see you next time on A Song and a Word. All right, blessings. Bye-bye.